Thanks, Rob, for reading that Bible passage to us. Well, good evening to you all, and uh, welcome again to Holy Trinity. Uh, my name is James, for those of you who I've not met yet. I'm one of the associate vicars here. And tonight we're continuing in our sermon series, and we're looking at how God blesses us. Two weeks ago, Jit spoke uh, and introduced this series about God's blessing in general. And then last week, Elaine, the vicar here, spoke on being blessed through prayer um, in the persistence and perseverance of prayer, which is all about relationship with God. We are blessed. Now, the word blessing or blessed is used a fair amount in the English language, isn't it? And in a nutshell, I, I like to think of being blessed by God as simply just receiving something good from him. And we can also be a blessing to others too by sharing what we have received, almost passing on the blessing to others. And that's what I'm going to be talking around and looking at tonight. The title for tonight is Blessed Through Community. So let me pray for us as we begin. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for all the good things you give us in so many ways we receive your blessing, uh, including the opportunity to gather together tonight to look at your word and to receive you and to meet with you. May our minds, our our hearts, our, our bodies, all that we are, be open to you tonight. Amen. So our reading tonight is from Acts, but I want to take a few steps back before we look at that and move, well, quite a long way back to Genesis. Don't worry, I'm not going to go at every book uh, all the way to Acts. But I want to start with Genesis, and I'll explain why that is in a moment. So in Genesis chapter 1, we read about how God creates. He creates the moon and the sun and the stars, and he says that they are good, good. Good. Okay, he creates the land and the sea, and he says that they are good. He creates them, and then he fills them up. He fills them with sea, vegetation, birds, sea creatures, land creatures, and he says that they are And the constant refrain in God's creation is that things are And then he takes things up an extra special notch. Because after humanity is created... In God's image, God just doesn't say that that it's good, but it's very good. But afterwards, after all this goodness, suddenly in chapter 2, we read about Adam being created. And what does God say? He said it is not good for the man to be alone. It is not good. This is the first not good in the Bible. And because of all this goodness, it really like makes us think, wow, this is not good. And I want this to be our starting point for tonight, because God's heart for us is that we will not be alone. God's desire, his want for us is that we will be in community with others. And it's not only that he wants us and desires us to be in community It is literally how he has created us. It is part of our very being, of what it is to be human. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, it says that God created humankind in his image. And over the centuries, many Christians have thought about this and, and actually strongly debated about what this might mean. And there's various aspects of this, but one aspect that comes through is that being created in the image of God, is that in Genesis, it says that God created them, and them as in plural. It is as if being human is not simply about being an individual, but instead being someone who is in relation with others. Part of bearing God's image is being in community with others. We humans, we're free for relationship, for community for, with others. We have the ability, unlike much of other creation, to be highly responsive, to communicate, to interact with others in such powerful 
and significant ways. And in this way, we echo God's very being because God is the triune God of love, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Now, it's always difficult to talk about God because, well, God is God and we only have human language. But you could say that we image God as humankind in community. Well, because God is community in some sense, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Humankind, we are made for community. Now, tonight, for the first time since uh, actually moving here um, back in August, um, my wife is able to join me at Holy Trinity tonight, and that's because um, her parents are at home with our two young children. Now, Charlotte's parents are wonderful people, Peter and Barbara, and they have a very nice kitchen uh, where they live. It's quite a sizable kitchen, but the issue if you have a large kitchen is that sometimes you fill it up with stuff. I don't know if any of you experienced this. So a number of years ago, um, it became a bit of a standing joke about their very complex filing system in their kitchen. Um, Well, when I say complex filing system, I mean pile of papers, and the filing system was a bread maker. Um, So on top of this bread maker in the corner of the kitchen was a pile of papers. And, um, well, as I was reflecting on tonight, I was reflecting on this bread maker, which we actually use today to make bread. Because a while ago, we said, well, we will actually use this to make bread, so can we have it? And they gave it to us. I'm not actually sure what they do for filing now, though. I might ask them, actually, uh, tomorrow when when I see them, or tonight when I get back. But... The bread maker is now fulfilling what it was made to do by making bread. And when something operates in the way it's designed or made for, it's glorious and it brings blessing. We are made for community, to live and breathe and work and rest and play with others alongside others. Of course, I don't need to explain what it's like for us to be devoid of community, socially distanced from each other, because we all have recent experience of this. Not being able to see those close loved ones, friends or family. And for some of us, we have found living through lockdown, and especially in Leicester, really, really difficult. However, I know that some have really enjoyed the opportunity to have a bit more space and solitude. And if, like me, you're an introvert, we do, of course, need space and time on our own. Different personality preferences, of course. But deep down within us all, in the way we are created, is that we are relational beings made for community with others. So in our Acts passage tonight, you might want to turn to it in your Bibles or phones, Acts chapter 4, verse 32 onwards, we see this community of these very first believers of Jesus. Now, in the great story of the Bible, uh, this chapter 4 of Acts, Jesus has, has died, he's risen again, and he's ascended to heaven. And the Holy Spirit has come and been poured out on Jesus' followers. And, and that, in some ways, is the immediate context for this passage. I mean, if you just scroll up, you will see just before that the believers have been gathered together and they've been praying and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is described in many different ways in the Bible, but one aspect of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, is to unite followers of Jesus together. And I think it's no coincidence that Luke Uh, the writer of Acts, has just described that the Holy Spirit has been filling up these followers of Jesus. That the whole group, it says, were one in heart and mind. And heart and mind is about, it's about everything. It's about feelings, desires, thoughts, impulses, affections, the whole of the person. So these early believers, filled and empowered by the Holy Spirit, were able to come together and be united as community. And we read today in our passage that a significant part of this was sharing with each other so that there was no one in need amongst them. Community at its heart is about love 
And love in its fullest expression is the laying down of self for someone else. There was no need among these early Christians because there was sacrificial giving to each other. Now, Luke doesn't really go into the specific details about how this works. He gives one particular example of Barnabas. But the point is, I believe, that this is a radical community where possessions and finances are not held onto tightly, but they're available for others where there is need. Now, these few verses from Acts paint a really positive picture about what incredible community can be like, incredible Christian community. But in Acts and the letters in the New Testament, we also see the fallenness and brokenness of people. In the early church, Christians didn't always get on well with each other. They weren't always of one heart and mind. And we do read about various fallings out. And for some of us here tonight, I expect that we can echo these experiences of negativity when it comes to community or family or friendship groups, because we may well have been hurt by them in the past. And that can make us quite nervous about opening ourselves up in community. Walls and defenses go up because we don't want to be hurt again. Some scars from previous experiences can run really deep. And in some circumstances, professional help could be required to help us through this. But Jesus, I want to say tonight, wants to bring us healing in all areas of our lives. And the hurts and pains of negative experiences of community are not excluded from this. Indeed, Jesus wants us to experience good and positive community. And I think one of the ways this works out is learning from Jesus' life itself. Now, as we've already explored in Genesis, humankind is created in the image of God, but the New Testament tells us that Jesus is the image of God. Quite simply, to understand what it is to be human, we need to look to Jesus. Because Jesus doesn't only show us what God is like and who God is, but because Jesus is the ultimate human, he shows us what it is to be human and how to live as a human. And Jesus was so interested, so passionately involved in community, the needs of others, and the good of others. He immersed himself in community. If you flick through the Gospels, you'll see how Jesus literally journeyed with people, went on the way with them. He dedicated time in close community with his disciples, teaching them, eating with them, feeding them, traveling with them, training them, encouraging them, even washing their feet. And of course, Jesus healed people of all kinds of diseases. Large crowds came to him. And he went to his death willingly for people. In an outstanding act of love and self-sacrifice, he laid down his love on the cross so that others might live. I mean, Jesus is the example that we look to in how to live for others. Indeed, how to die for others. He gives us an example of how we might do community with others. But not only does Jesus demonstrate this, demonstrates how to live as community, but he actually creates community. He creates very community. Because through Jesus' death, he made a way for us to be united with God. Jesus enables us to be reconciled with God through the forgiveness of our sin and the restoration of our brokenness. And in this way, Jesus creates a community for us to be a part of. And this community is, well, it's the church. The church over history 
and into the future over continents and countries. Jesus' believers, Jesus' followers are united together in the most incredible community. Jesus creates a community. He makes his followers into a massive family, a great community with little expressions all over the globe, including right here in Leicester, including right here in this building tonight. Jesus enables us to be children of the loving Father, our Father in heaven. Now, the Bible talks about this in loads of places, but one really succinct one is in Galatians 3, 26. It says, in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. So if you are a follower of Jesus here tonight, know that you are a beloved child of the Father, that Jesus died for you to enable you to enter into a community with the Trinity, the loving Father, the Son who died for you, and the Spirit who lives within you. And because all who believe in Jesus are children of the loving Father, they're united into one incredible family of siblings together, incredible community together. Christian community is so distinctive to any other kind of community simply because of what brings us together and unites us, God. I'd love to get a little bit more practical now as I continue. Now, I don't know if you've been to those talks where someone really tenuously tries to link in some points uh, alliteratively. They all start with the same letter. Well, that accidentally happened in my preparation for tonight. So if that really grates on you, then I must apologize. But I'm about to share with you four Ps. Possessions and finances. There's an F, PF. Presence, that's presence as in being there, not a gift. Practical help and prayer. And there are overlaps and there are others, but these are four that really sprang out to me as I was reflecting on this and, and this passage and indeed the beginning of Acts. Because being in a Christian community is like being in a cycle of blessing, of generosity, of giving and receiving to and from others, all based in living in the truth that we are blessed by God. So let's start with my first P, possession and finances. And we see this in our passage from Acts today a lot. Because quite simply, when we know that God provides for what we need, we don't need to grab onto or hold onto things. Our things become available for others. We are so blessed by what we receive from God, and we can pass this blessing on to others. Now, I'm aware some of us have plenty, some of us have less. But in all that we receive, we can share with others. Christian community is about, as Acts 4 puts it, seeing that there is no needy person amongst us. And this can work out very practically, you know, giving to our Friday evening triangle group is one simple way we can do this at HTL. There's a a box out in the foyer, and I know many of you do this. I'm very grateful for that. And I want to share two very simple um, stories from my life, one where I was a blessing to someone else, and one where I was blessed myself. So as I mentioned earlier, I moved back in August to Leicester. And when I moved in, I had lots of empty boxes. And I could have tried to sell them, but I thought, you know, someone at a church the size of Holy Trinity must be moving house soon. And I can bless them with them. And I was able to give them to Marie, who works in the coffee shop when she moved last year. Just a small thing, but a blessing. A few years ago, I went to America And uh, I was doing a placement at a church there. um, And I went to meet a Christian leader who was involved with this massive regional food bank. Showed me kind of around the warehouse with these huge shelves. And after about literally 45 minutes of like chatting and like showing me around, he suddenly kind of said, James, do you need a car when you're here? And I said, well, well, yeah, that would be really helpful actually. And he basically lent me his car. I I met him 45 minutes earlier. Not only that, he gave me a gift card for fuel, said that we could use a swimming pool when he was away for a few days in his house, and um, the car was actually quite nice. And I was like, I literally met you 45 minutes ago, but we were united through Jesus 
part of the global family, the global community of Christians. We are so blessed by the generosity of God, our very breath in our lungs, that we can pass on that blessing of generosity to others. So that was number one, possessions. Number two, presence or time. Christian community is about being with each other, not giving up the habit of meeting together, as Hebrews 10 puts it. Simply being in each other's presence and being together as we live life and learn to follow Jesus together. And of course, this can take forms in many different ways, like us being together in this service right now. But there are also smaller expressions. And that's one of the reasons why we have MSCs here at um, HDL. The other day I was talking to someone, I said, oh, can you tell me more about those MSGs? It's like, no, MSCs. So mission-shaped communities, mission-shaped communities, MSCs. Our encouragement is that you would join one and be part of one. It can sometimes be quite hard to get to know people in a, a church of this size. In the MSCs, you can get into a more intimate expression of Christian community and get to know each other better. And part of presence is being available for each other. This might be being with others when they're in a low place, simply being that listening ear or sitting with them in suffering, but also in joyful times. I don't know about you and your walk with Jesus, but for me, I've certainly had the, the deepest conversations in life with other Christians. We share, well, we share Jesus, but there's something about sharing Jesus together that just enables that closeness in community. So possessions, presence. Thirdly, practical help. Just helping someone with their garden or to move house, offering to babysit for their children, giving someone a lift somewhere. It might be serving as part of the wider church here, welcoming people in the band, serving refreshments, working in a coffee shop, um, helping with the finance team, whatever it is I could go on. It might be serving by leading in some way in, a, in an MSC. I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who, who serves and gives practical help as part of this Christian community. Thank you for the ways that you bless this community. Now, in all of this, we, of course, need to be wise about being available for others and to learn how to say yes or no. And in some ways, that's like a whole other sermon. And I think this is part of our following Jesus. When we look at Jesus' life, Jesus was not always available. Elaine was sharing this morning about how he, he went up the mountain to, to pray. We see in the Gospels that he retreated. He wasn't always with people. And as I said, we, we image Jesus' life. We learn how to be a human from him. So possessions, presence, practical help. And finally, and quite simply, prayer. And of course, Elaine spoke about this last week. Prayer is such a vital part of our Christian community. When we gather together, we pray. But when we are apart, we also pray for each other. We share prayer requests with others, simply saying, I've got a need. I'd love you to pray for this. And that is another way of of responding to people's needs, not just in you know, possessions or presence or, or practical help, but in prayer as well. And I'm really encouraged by the openness of people to request prayer. And you know, some people hate WhatsApp, some people love it. But as a tool for sharing prayer and prayer requests, I think it is amazing. So possessions, presence, practical help, and prayer. Being in a Christian community is like being in a cycle of blessing, of generosity, of giving and receiving to and from others, all based living in the truth that we are blessed by God. We receive blessings from God and then bless others. We bless because we are blessed. We bless others as a response to being blessed. 
And this kind of community that I've been talking about is incredibly attractive. A community that really cares for each other, is dedicated to each other. I was at an MSC gathering a number of years ago and there was someone who was invited in. I think literally someone met him on a bus and said, do you want to come and have food with us tonight? He wasn't a man of faith. He, he didn't believe in Jesus. And we were chatting about this. And he said, you know, there's just something about the community of church that is so bewilderingly attractive. There's something so intriguing by it. Living our lives in Christian community well is so incredibly attractive and it's missional because people who are not yet followers of Jesus look in and see the way lives are lived and shared together and think, what is this? This looks good. Maybe I could be a part of this. And sometimes one of the first steps for people encountering Jesus is actually encountering Jesus' community his church, and the way they are together. I want to offer a few challenges and invitations tonight as I finish. For those who do know, who do not know Jesus tonight, my challenge, my encouragement is come and play. Will you come and be part of his community, the church, and all that means? This morning, in our morning service, someone gave their life to Jesus. They became a Christian. And there was such joy for so many reasons, but including that they've joined God's community. And there may well be people here tonight, online or in this building right now, who've not yet invited Jesus into their life. And I want to say, come. Come and accept Jesus and join his family. Perhaps you would call yourself a Christian. And if you're in an MSC, then great. How can your MSC grow in its community and be a blessing not only to its members, but also be a blessing to those who don't know Jesus too? How can it be a community that is so attractive that others want to come and see what it's all about and join in? And if you aren't in an MSC and maybe you're relatively new to HTL, maybe not. What is holding you back from joining one? Come and see what being a closer part of God's family can be like, of being a part of Jesus' community and being blessed through it and blessing others too. Jesus is making us into a massive family, a massive community united by him, his work, by his Holy Spirit, children of a loving father. And for those who don't know Jesus tonight, there's an offer, there's an invitation to come and join his family and be blessed by Jesus and his family to say yes for the first time and enter into this community he is building. Lois, would you come and join me as we lead a response? And I'd love to invite the band up too. And as, I, um, as I've been speaking tonight in some ways, some responses kind of just fall completely out of it. Throwing yourself into a community, maybe that's something that you've been maybe just holding at arm's length for some of us here. Maybe it's a, um, for some reason, whether it's past hurt, maybe it's something else. But what is the Lord saying to you in this time? Maybe, maybe it's a, how can I immerse myself more in this? What, what, what barrier is in, in my way? And of course, I've already mentioned it. Maybe for you tonight, it's joining God's family, saying, saying yes to Jesus and saying, yes, I want to I wanna be part, part of this. I if the band could, could just start to play, please. Thank you. the band are playing I'd, I'd love us to just in this in this moment just just reflect what, what is it that the Lord is speaking to you about in this moment it might be that there's been something I've, I've, I've said tonight that has really 
you know, feel, you feel like there's a, oh, that, that might be me for some reason. And if that's the case, whether it's about saying yes to Jesus, maybe it's about hurt in your uh, past when it comes to community, maybe it's something else, then I'd, I'd love to invite um, you to come, come forward. And I just had a real sense as James was speaking that for some of us, we might be like, yes, community, I'm in, but you then don't know what to do. And I feel a sense that God wants to inspire people this evening, that he wants to give you dreams, he wants to give you creative ideas for what community looks like in your place, whether it's your friends, your colleagues, your neighbours, but God wants to inspire people this evening. And also a sense that there might be some of us here this evening that maybe God has been speaking to us as James has been speaking. Maybe there's been a sense of a quickening of your heart, the Holy Spirit speaking that you know you need to get out of your comfort zone in order to follow what God has for you. And that can be really hard, that can be really tough because it's comfortable in our com place of comfort, isn't it? And it can be really hard to take that step out and say, God, I'm following you. And so along with those people that James called forward, if you want a prayer for any of that as we go into a time of worship, please come to the front. Um, James, myself and the staff team would love just to pray for you in that, for God to do a work this evening. I encourage you, Maybe the comfort is you coming forward for prayer. Maybe that's stepping out of your comfort. If you know that you need prayer this evening, then make sure you don't leave without getting it. Maybe it's you tap someone next to you and ask them to pray for you. But God wants to do work this evening. And let's be inspired for community. Let's be asking God what he wants to use us for as we go from here. <laughs> 